next guy we're going to bring up, uh, I'm so excited to, uh, to, uh, to bring out for you. You're going to learn a ton from this guy. I want to read uh, some of his stuff. I'm going to talk about him uh, because he's, he means the world to be very special. Uh, but Coach Lewis Corella, uh, Georgia Tech's new head strength and conditioning coach, was named College Football's 2018 Strength and Conditioning Coach of the Year by Football School. This is the best strength coach in America that's about to come to Dr. Corella earned the award of recognition of his performance as the head football strength conditioning coach at the University of uh, Buffalo in 2018. Uh, his long season at UB Corella helped turn, turn around a program that went 8 and 16 over the previous two years into a squad that won the Mid American Conference East Division Championship and earned the program's first bowl versus since 2013, and only its third all time. Corella brings a wealth of experience working with eight different Division I football programs in the last decade, eight. In the last five years, Corella has served as a head strength coach at four different schools, North Texas, Louisiana Lafayette, Buffalo, and now Georgia Tech. Prior to Corella becoming a head strength coach, he spent three seasons as an assistant strength coach at the University of uh, Michigan. He also served as an assistant strength and conditioning coach at Mississippi State and Georgia Tech. Following his graduation, Defiance College, who is a two-time all-conference running back and team most valuable player. Corella served as an intern strength coach at both Virginia and USF, as well as a graduate assistant at Mississippi State. He earned his master's degree in kinesiology from Mississippi State in 2010. He is certified with the Collegiate Strength and Conditioning Coach <coughs> Association in the United States Weightlifting Federation of the American Red Cross. Corella and his wife, Lori, have a son, Marshall, and a daughter, Allie, and they have another one on the way, I believe. So, real quick, Coach Corella uh, worked uh, with me at Mississippi State. He worked uh, with me at Virginia, uh, and he helped. He's one of the catalysts that helped me get my career going. There's a lot of guys, former assistants, that have done that. He started with Coach McKeever there. He has been uh, uh, nothing but the, the best that you could possibly imagine in terms of being a great person, first class all the way, great friend, the best human being, and I love him. Please welcome Coach Luke Corella. Uh, thank you guys. It's a, uh, you know, I called this when I got asked to speak and I saw the lineup. All my mentors are speaking at this clinic. My mentors are my best friend in this whole profession. So the guys that have raised me in this whole thing, th this, this is literally like walking into heaven's clinic. If I could write it up perfect, this would be the one I'd come to because it's the greatest I've ever seen. Um, there's a lot I can say about that journey that you just heard about, and hopefully you get a lot, but understand this. The number one goal I have today isn't to, to preach about anything I've done. It's to, to give value to you. It's to add value to you and your program. And if I don't do that, this talk is meaningless, okay? So I come to clinics a lot, and I try to take good notes and bring it back to my program, and sometimes I don't write anything, all right? I, that's the exact opposite of what I want to happen today for you guys. So please, you know, bear with me. I put a lot on this because there's a lot of pain behind it. There's a lot of perspective behind it. And I, I tried to give you everything I could in this, in this PowerPoint. So um, hang in there with me because we're here we go. This is the first day I met the team at Georgia Tech. And they don't know who I am yet. So I just want to show you real quick. The number one thing I want to preach about right now is this no talent coder. What does that mean? Every coach has talent. Every, every guy has a unique gift in this room. But, but things that take no talent, you got to be more aware of. You have to be more intentional about. And if you're not, you're not going to make a big difference in anyone. So what I want to do today is make you understand this. The easiest things to do are still the best kept secrets, in my opinion. No doubt about it. And I hope I give you some of those today. Struggle is your one-way ticket to success. There is no other way. It's not a round trip. Struggle in your career and your life is your one-way path to succeeding. That's what I've learned. And understand no talent concepts, things that take absolutely no talent to be great at and to make a difference. All right, that, that's the point in this whole thing. And then coaching to be irreplaceable. 
You gotta, look, I've, I've been replaced a lot. I've been let go a lot, whatever. My job for those athletes is to feel like whoever comes in can't beat that. They, they can't, there's no way. And that, that's, how I, that's how I hope you feel when you coach too. Um, being a strength coach, I separate the words. You gotta have strength for your players, okay? When they're down, you don't, you don't need strength when you're 12 and 0. You don't need like, no one's gotta say anything. You gotta steer the ship though when it's sinking. That's the key, man. Oh, I've been at 1 and 11 and fired. All right, how do you come in Sunday every day after you just got beat by 58 and motivate these kids to get ready for the next week when they're even better than the team you just played? That's, that is being a strength for those players and being their coach. You gotta coach their hearts and souls, man. It ain't about the wins. You gotta coach them. The record will come if you do that first. <clears throat> Mentally tough, what are we training these kids for? What, what, what's the point, man? Like, is it, is it just to get through that workout? Is it to, to maybe get in a moment in a game where they have to be mentally tough? Or is it for everything else? That's the way I look at it. If you don't, I don't think you're doing them a, uh, uh, you're, not, you're doing them a disservice. Because mentally tough, I, I give these kids such ridiculous things to do in a weight room. Ridic you can't even think of them. They're so hard to do or so challenging. But when they do them, what happens? Sure, they got through the workout, but when life hits them right in the mouth one day, and it's gonna hit hard, they're gonna be ready. Their adversity will not shake them. So, like, people just gotta get a grip of why you do certain things a certain way, and then believe in that 100%, and just be the message for those kids. You gotta be prospective preachers, too. Every day I try to give the kids a message. All right, and I'll talk about that too, but uh, Kevin Vanderbush, when I was at Michigan, we brought him in to speak at our clinic. He's a high school strength coach. He's been an incredible, incredible resource. He said, look, you're either the marshmallow, the jelly bean, or the stone. Three types of people. Marshmallow, when you put them over fire, all right, it looks soft on the outside, melts right away when you put it over fire, just as expected. A jelly bean looks hard on the outside, hard shell, you put it over fire, though, after a little bit, dissolves, right? Soft on the inside. And then you got your stones. You got your stones, you put that stone over fire, it walks out of the fire. More polished, more polished than it ever came in. So you, you're trying to build stones in your program up here, physically, all around. You, jelly beans and stones get you beat. All right, so that's the, that's the key right there. Um, the interview, every kid I've ever coached, no matter where, as a head strength coach, I've, this is my fifth head, fourth head job in five years. So every kid I've interviewed in the first two months of the job, it takes a while, it takes about 20 minutes. I have 25 questions that I ask every player about their life. Because if you don't know all this stuff about them, you have no chance, all right? You're, you're saying you wanna make a difference, but you're not leading like that. So if you don't know the biggest obstacle they've overcome, if you don't know what the home situation's like, it like if, if you don't understand what kind of coach they hate, guys, I'm telling you, you're setting yourself up. Because how are you gonna get through? They're not the same as that kid. So you've gotta figure out, and I type it up, so I can always go back to it. And if he's struggling one day, I remember he just lost his mom and his dad and his brother's in jail. Okay, so all this stuff you gotta understand. Like I said, every day, okay, it doesn't matter what it is, okay, it, it, in your strength template, you have a card. That is great. You have a program that works. Good for you. If you don't have a perspective message at the end of your workout for those kids to hear on a positive note before they leave your building, I believe is failing. You have to talk to your kids and share everything. Share your mistakes, share your flaws. Be a human to them, humble up. Go tell them everything that you failed in, man, and watch how they respond. Because they're gonna understand real quick, man, this dude's really trying to help me and he's walked in my shoes before. Just be real, man, and don't try to be the superhuman. That's the key to unlocking players' potential. Get them to, to buy into you and really try to hear you when you're trying to, to help them. Every day, a message of some kind, motivation, story, whatever it is, because your deposits in them matter more than your record at the end of the year.
Okay, team challenges. These are just something like, I always look for things to take back to my program. If I can give you anything, these are the best things right here, okay? At the end of every lift, kids are done, all right? They're tired, fuck. You know, they got nothing left. All right, so don't make it taxing. Make it mental, all right? These are finishers that I've done. For example, all right guys, we got five jumping jacks. Don't count three. Ready, go. One, two, four, five. But every time, every time, never fails. With a big group of 40, someone counts three. Or someone counts four, whatever it is. I switch up the numbers, I count down from five, I count whatever it is. But as a big group, you, you realize, because that's how you win, you gotta focus at the end. The whole workout didn't matter if you don't focus at the end. Uh, right, left, right, you know, it, it basically it's just the quarter turns. I'm, you guys have seen it. You say, right, boom, snap down. Left, left, right, ready, hit, hit, hit. All right, someone always goes the wrong direction. All right, you give them the most basic elementary school directions, but they can't think when they're tired. Team three by fives, I got this from Coach Wellman. He's, um, in my opinion, one of the best ever. But um, three by fives, all right? So they got the whole team up, you pick a captain, all right? The captain has to lead, you say, ready, break, boom, they all switch to the line, put their hand down. At that point, you say, right, right. That's the foot they gotta touch within a three by five. So five, five, finish, right? You give them the right, right call. All they hear is right, right, and it's on the whistle. Well, they gotta listen to when the whistle blows, but every other coach on staff is saying, go, hit, hit, go, trying to draw them off sides. All right, and then they can't start until the whistle blows, and then they gotta touch with the right foot, and then they gotta touch with the right foot. They will touch with the wrong foot, they will jump off sides, and it's a great challenge for your team at the end of a workout. And then team gasser, half, half gassers, don't just run half gassers, they'll run half gassers. Skill goes, big skill goes, then line goes, okay? Start your clock. Tell the team they got to get five in five minutes. Because every time the skill finishes, big skill finishes, line finishes, should be around a minute as a team. So you put that pressure on the whole team, and now it's not, oh, he's missing times. He's, he, man, make your times. No, no, no. The whole team's got to make the time. All right, so that's, that's a big finish, too. <laughs> it's all in the warm up, guys. I don't know if you've uh, realized that yet, but if you warm your team up, pay attention to it very carefully because it gives you all the answers, almost, 90% of them. The details are in the warm-up. You can tell who's ready, you can tell who's dogging it, you can tell who's gonna have a terrible day, you can have, everything is right there in the warm-up. Your care factor, your readiness, your finish. If you're not finishing through the line, if you cut it one yard short, if you jump off side before I blow the whistle, if you don't snap down, if you don't clap, whatever, but that gives you the, <laughs> the biggest observation every day right in front of you Who's ready? Um, this is just something personal. What's with all the hard workouts, coach? You know, what, what's the point in all these hard workouts? I don't feel like I'm getting much stronger sometimes because I'm doing all these hard workouts. And I'm, look, man, life's gonna punch you right in the face, okay? Life's gonna fire you over and over again. You're gonna be told you're not good enough. You're gonna get replaced by a guy that you don't think's better than you. Your faith is going to be tested. Your family's gonna look you in the eye and say, how do we get health insurance next month? I don't know, but I know we're gonna make it because that, that is what I've gone through. Life is hard, man. That's why you do the hard workouts. That's what it's about. It's, it's a challenge, man. Life is a challenge. And if you're going to back down, then back down in workouts too. Because that's, that's what you set yourself up for. So if you don't give your kids challenges, you set them up to fail. <clears throat> what, takes, what it takes to love something. This is another thing that I've learned over time. The word love is so tossed around. Hey, love you, man. Hey, love, love you, man. Look, man, if I say I love you, and I say it to a few people, you got to understand that there is meaning behind that word love. There is deep, deep rooted meaning behind it. I say it to all my mentors. I say it to really close friends. And you know, I say it to my family. Because if you don't go through failure with someone that tests your relationship, you don't love that person if you're going to bail. If you don't work as hard as you can, if you don't sacrifice everything, if you don't get rejected and keep coming back for more, if you don't get your loyalty tested and your faith tested, 
You don't love that thing if you bail out. So if you fought through all that, and you still are there, and that person's still with you, that's love. Because to me, don't throw around a word that means so much. Love you, man, love you, yeah, do you? Do you, if, if I was down in the dumps, would you love me then? Would you still be with me? So love, man, that, that's what it means. If I say I love you to my kids or to, to my close people in my life, that's why I'm saying it. Because I've gone through all six of those words with that person, and it really means something to me. Three secrets to success. All right, this is for everyone. And I don't mean to disrespect. Where I get, say yes, sir, ma'am. Say yes, sir. Say yes, ma'am. Arrive early. Stay late. One of the best things I've ever learned from Aaron Wellman. Get there early, man. Get there early. You got all this stuff you want to do, and you never say you got enough time. But get there early. No one's there. No one's doing anything in the morning. Not two hours before your day starts. So if you want to get stuff done, and if you want to make an impression on people, young coaches, if you want to make an impression on a coach that you're trying to get as a reference, arrive early and stay late. That's it. That's all you got to do. There is no secret, man. It's like, it's so easy, but so many people don't do it. it takes no talent to say, yes, sir, arrive early and stay late. Make a difference. Now, remember, look, the only thing that truly gets remembered, and you, may, you might make a great difference at your job, and that's awesome, man. I, I wish it to you. But remember, the only job that gets remembered is the one you do at home. And I'm a hypocrite sometimes for saying that. I feel bad going home at night because I just gave a talk on attention to detail, and then I get ripped by my wife for not having attention to detail. You know what I mean? Like, I, I messed up the whole bath routine. Ha, ah, ah. ha. I didn't mean to. I'm sorry. Nah. If he was a player, he'd be running. So I gotta like punish myself mentally. You know, I'm at home and, and that's, that's just one example. My wife keeps me in check, don't worry about that. All right, but just remember that guys, it's very important, man. We get caught up. I mean, I, I don't think my brain stopped since I got on the plane to come here. And that's the first time it all slowed down for me and I could reflect on what just happened in the last year. <clears throat> Keep your family first. Quickest way to lose respect, all right? This is, this is for all the posers out there. Um, you, you take shortcuts, you cut corners, but then you give advice about the hard way and the long way. All right, you, you, try, to, you try to fool people by saying, ah, well, you can't cut corners, but you cut corners. Or, well, you gotta work extremely hard, but you don't work hard. Guys, it doesn't work, all right? Just play or sniff it out. If you wanna be that guy as a coach, be that guy, as yourself, okay? Be the message every day. Don't try to be something you're not. And if you're not, that's fine. But just be yourself and stay home. Don't try to bark orders if, if that's not who you are. Don't try to be someone else. I've done research over the years. Um, I found this very true. When you care more about the team goals than your own, your own goals get accomplished quicker. If you're selfless, you have personal success quicker. That is my true belief. If you care, like all these kids grow up now thinking about Twitter and shout outs and Facebook and all this stuff and, and likes and, and worthiness on social media. Guys, if you come, if they come in and they hear you preaching about being a good teammate, they don't even understand what you're talking about. So being a good teammate is one of the hardest challenges we have. I'm trying to give uh, best teammate of the week out every week, which I've never done before because I've seen it at a high level now of kids just being selfish. Selfish gets you beat. Selfish gets you fired. Selflessness brings success. Care about the guy next to you. Uh, admit your flaws or potential. Guys, I found that it's harder to admit your potential than it is to admit your flaws. If you admit your potential, guess what that means? That means, okay, I've admitted what I'm capable of now. So. Am I living up to it or am I not? And if I'm not, that requires a lot more work than what I'm doing right now. So if you admit your potential to yourself, you are going to either be embarrassed, be proud. One, one thing's gonna happen though. You gotta go hard, man. Because all of you are capable of ridiculous things. I mean, unbelievable things. You're here because of that. So if you admit your potential, what you're really capable of in yourself, you have to work harder than you are right now, including myself. 
These are for all the assistants, GAs, and interns, okay? If you want a multi-year contract one day, if you want a full-time job one day, if you want to be a head strength coach one day, work like you're on a one-day co one contract today. If you don't work like this is it for me every day, you're not going to make it at the level you should make it at. All right, because I don't know. I mean, Ron McKeefrey, I accidentally fell asleep in our first meeting as an intern for him. And I felt terrible, and I was so embarrassed, and I was like, oh my God, my life's over. If you don't feel like that, if you do something to, to not uh, help in a high level, if your care factor isn't there, you're gonna have trouble in this field. Because I don't see a lot of genuine interns anymore. I see a lot of guys that want credit. I see a lot of guys that don't want to be there early and then leave early. So that dude, all right, Ron McKeefrey, I wanted to try anything I could to just stand out in an intern class at 13. But if I fell asleep on the first day, what am I doing? Right? I'm a, so work like you're on a one-day contract. At the end of the day, if you got evaluated, you're either fired or hired. That's how it's got to be. Who's a dad in here? Anyone a dad in here? Okay. Um, I've learned this both ways, on both ends. I've learned it on both ends. It doesn't matter how invested you are in your kid's life, the impact's going to be the same. Good or bad, if you're not in your kid's life at all, that impact's staying with them forever. If you are the best dad ever, that impact's staying with them forever. And it goes by the day, guys. It doesn't go by the month. Well, I took him to the, the, the Monster Jam in February. I'm a good dad. Every day, guys, they look to you. And it doesn't matter what you did yesterday. They have the shortest memory in the world. They want their dad, man. They want their dad. So be there for them. And remember, if you're in their life in a positive way, one day they'll do that too. Truth. The word truth, I believe, is a dodgeball. No one wants to hear it. <laughs> no one wants to hear the truth about themselves anymore. They try to dodge it left and right. There's, there's two ways you can look at it. Number one, taking criticism is tough. But if you don't, you're going you're gonna to fold under any pressure because you can't take criticism. If you're not your biggest critic, you'll fold under any kind of other criticism. Now, if you're a leader, it works this way too. If you're afraid to tell someone how they really are performing, you're just as bad. You're gonna get fired because of their performance if you don't level with them and have an honest conversation. So if you're dodging them to, to go around them and tell them that they're not holding their end up, you're just as guilty. As a leader, you gotta let people know the truth. You gotta tell them, or else just live with it. Hard work pays off, but no one tells you when. That's something my dad told me my whole life. He goes, just keep working, man. It's coming. Just keep working, it's coming. In the hardest times, like, there's no way, Dad. I just worked my ass off and nothing's happening. Keep working. No one tells you when. No one tells you when. But if you keep the faith, guys, look, this time last year, about a month ago, month, like a month ago, a year ago, okay, a year and a month ago, I'm moving all my stuff into a storage shed in Buffalo, New York, my third head job in four years. I'm crying because I don't know what I'm doing to my family. I don't, I don't, it doesn't make sense to me. I'm like, I try to work as hard as I can. I try to do everything the right way. I pour my heart and soul into the kids and I get fired. I don't know what to do. So I'm, I'm in this moment and I'll never forget it. Just miserable, like about to give up. I don't know what else to do. I've given my everything to this thing and it just doesn't pay me back. And then Buffalo last year was the most magical year I've ever had. Did I do anything different than I did in North Texas or Louisiana? No. I stayed true to myself. I believed. I tried to do everything right again in the most relentlessly positive way. And then it paid off in ways I couldn't even think of. So if you're in a tough spot right now in life, if you got stuff going on, look, man, all I can say is this. Hard work pays off, but no one tells you when. And keep that in your head, man. Keep it in, keep it in front of your head. Dreams don't come a reality. What do you do? We made it to the MAC championship last year. It was a dream come true to me to play in Detroit Lions Stadium. 
I've been a Barry Sanders fanatic. Like, you're not a, Barry, you're not a better Barry Sanders fan than I am. You, you are not, all right? When I moved my son into his room for the first time he ever came back to our house, a Barry Sanders shrine was all over his room. A signed jersey was right above his crib. That's just who I was growing up. I was Barry Sanders. He was my idol. And to get to a MAC championship after all I've been through in the Detroit Lions Stadium, I'm wearing my Barry Sanders socks. I'm wearing my Barry Sanders shirt. Jim, you were there. All right? It's a dream come true to me. And then we were up by 19 in the third quarter and lost by one. I was paralyzed inside, the broken. Terror, terror in my heart for these seniors, for everything. For what's the, what the hell that just happened? So what happens next when your dream doesn't become a reality? When you think it's like meant to be more than ever and it doesn't happen, what do you do? Well, you could give up. You could say, well, screw it. Or you could just believe in yourself and believe in your team and slowly move on. Okay, it's, it still hurts to this day, losing that game. That one hurt, man, that stunk. That was a lot of work behind that game. And to see it just fold like that and just cheaply got away, that hurt, all right? And that's just an example. That's an example in life, all right? It, sometimes you work as hard as you can and you don't get exactly what you want, but you're probably closer than you ever were before. And that back championship game, I was talking to uh, Kano the other night. He goes, you know, sometimes when you're in it, you don't realize how far you've come. You don't realize it. And I sat back and thought about it just last night. I'm like, you know what, that, that makes perfect sense. It's, it's perspective. It's easy to get caught up in a moment and believe you deserve more. But if you get caught up that way, it ain't gonna happen, man. Just appreciate your moment that you're in. Friends and excellence, okay, I've learned this over time. It was hard. The closer you get to excellence in your life, and I'm not saying I'm excellent, I'm saying I'm trying, to, I'm trying to do something with my life, you're gonna lose friends, all right? People, people want you to be average. People like you being average, because it makes them comfortable, all right? If, you, if you're just chilling, not trying to do much with your life, not trying to create waves, right? When you, when you make a difference, when you start moving stuff, you disrupt things. People don't like disruption. If you're in a boat, People don't like waves. And if you're a wave maker, which you should be, you're a coach, people aren't gonna agree with it all the time. People aren't gonna like you sometimes. If you're trying to do what you gotta do to get to your dream, you're gonna lose friends, man, cut the baggage. That's just how it goes, man. If you're not on my mission, I got no time. Because I got a family and I have a mission. That's, that's what your mindset has to be. What this is, look, I saw this, I don't know who said this, that's why I don't have any, like, quotes on anything, but I don't know who said that, but it's the truest thing ever. What if you woke up today and the only thing you had left was what you thanked God for yesterday? I don't know. Sometimes I go to bed and I forget. I forget to thank Him. So what, what if you woke up and you had nothing? Guys, you got a lot, a lot of, a lot of, very, very, you're very blessed, all right? You're very blessed to even be in these seats right now. We're all blessed to coach kids and families and all the people that put you in the position you're in today. If you don't thank him a lot for that, man, that, that's, that's not cool. You gotta, you gotta thank the man above for everything you have. How do you lead? If it's not by example, don't be vocal. <laughs> like, there's no point. If you're not gonna try to lead every way by example, if you, like it goes back, you don't wanna show up early, you don't wanna stay late, don't talk about it then. Don't try to be a leader. Guys, you gotta be willing to do everything first and then talk. That's where we're at with this team right now, I'm coaching now. Guys, the hardest thing to do is coach under fatigue. The hardest thing to do is lead under fatigue. I don't need a leader when everything's cool. <laughs> Just be an example. Just be an example and then talk. <laughs> don't think about what you don't have or what you didn't get after praying. Think about all the countless blessings you have without asking. All right, and that goes, that goes back. I don't have to elaborate much on that. Think about all the countless blessings that you have without even asking. Football IQ. So uh, uh, Coach McKee, I got this from too a little bit. 
He told me well, years ago, Marcus Sonovich, the head strength coach for the Tampa Bay Bucks, he said a high school coach came up to him after a clinic one day and he said, hey coach, uh, looking for more team speed. Any advice? And he goes, sure, meet me tomorrow and bring your playbook. Yeah, okay, so he brings his playbook. He goes, all right, do your players know the playbook like the back of their hand? Well, I mean, it's a new, insta you know, it's, okay, until they know the playbook like the back of their hand, it doesn't matter what their, their team's speed is. It doesn't matter how fast you are. Because Derek Brooks, the all-pro linebacker for the Tampa Bay Bucks, who is now a Hall of Famer, ran a 4 7 8, 40. He's the fastest player on the field every play you turn the film on because he knows everybody's job and he knows every tendency the offense has. Team speed. Done. In a nutshell. So your 4 4 40 means nothing if your football IQ is equivalent to a 5 flat. That's the truth, okay? And, and that's for any sport. If you don't know the principles in and out of what's coming at you, you're, what, what, what are you gonna do? You gotta be smart and you gotta be with it. Mismanaged success is the leading cause of failure. So if you don't stay humble and you succeed, you're gonna fail. Well-managed failure is the leading cause of success. So when I fail, you better manage that well. You better take it and use it. When you succeed, you better dump it quick. Okay, and that's the life of a coach. You, that is the life of a coach. You have to stay humble at the top, and you better get back up when you get knocked down. Strong versus tough, all right? Here's my point, okay? I do a lot of crazy workouts on my own so I can feel the pain I'm about to give to the team. Right? I do every workout that the team does the day before. So I can feel it, so I can work, so I can you know, just get, uh, change things. If I gotta change things, if that won't work, I don't know why I wrote that, that kind of thing. Here's, here's the purpose of this slide, okay? If you squat 500 pounds, great. But if you can lunge a mile without stopping, I'm going to war with you. I don't care how strong you are. But this is like a steel trap. I'm going to war with that steel trap. You got one rep max, great. You're strong, good. You lunge a mile, you stop on the first 20 yards. It doesn't matter to me. True brute strength is great, but if you can have both, if you can have that endurance, mental capacity to endure, you're unstoppable. And not just a workout, that when stuff comes at you. So I'm going to war with tough guys. <laughs> Angry versus sinful. Look, I, a lot of great habits that get made through anger. When you get pissed off, when something really bothers you, you have some of the best workouts you've ever had. You go to the gym and beat the bag harder than you've ever beat it. Anything you do under anger, you can do more. You can just, you can accomplish more, you can work harder, all this stuff. So if you can channel, sometimes it's sinful not getting angry. Well, sometimes we think it might be sinful if we get angry at someone. Look, if something's not right, if you're not gonna stand up for what you believe, you, you better get angry if someone's not believing in that. And, and it creates great habits. All right, you stay in that anger path for a little bit. It's gonna create great habits. So when you're not angry, you just do it again. Thanks first blame, okay? This is, this is an example of the equipment managers at your school or your mom before or whoever. Thankless people, right? It's amazing to me. It never, it, it amazes me every time. We expect, we expect, we expect, we expect all this stuff to happen for us. All this stuff to be done for us every day. Laundry done every day. Mom, in Little League, put the pads in my pants. Do I have lunch ready? Is breakfast ready? Like all this stuff I didn't even think about when I was little. But we walk by it every day and don't say thank you. Or if we do, we don't mean it. But if something is wrong at all, if something's missing, and my laundry bag is not in my locker, I'm pointing the finger right away and play, uh, play some blame. You, you, you're, not, you're, you're always quick to blame. You're very slow to thank. And, and not just say, thanks. Mean it, man. Thank people that make your job convenient and because they got to do a lot of inconvenient things to make that happen. Four quarters of thanks. I look at this as you got your year, your, your annual calendar. The first of the year. I got a certain list of people that I thank. And a lot of them are in this room, okay? My, the three 
people that have the highest level of influence on me are in this room. Every quarter equals three months. You got four quarters in the year. You thank those people. And don't just send a text. Call them. Call them. Thank you for everything you do. Thank you for everything you've done for me. My family so thankful for you. Write them a handwritten letter. Buy them something. Send them a book. Whatever. But I know that guy, I know that guy, I know that guy gets a text from me every three months of just how grateful I am for what they've done for me. And it doesn't work once a year. If you reach out once a year, you're, you're useless. You're pointless. Okay? Make it intentional to thank these people four times a year. That's it. That's all you got to do. Because guess what happens when you get fired? Oh, you're all of a sudden reaching out. You're reaching, oh, it's too late. Way too late. Okay? Be thankful now. Start lying more. What does that mean? Everything these days is a post. Everything you do, everything you live is a post. Everything these kids live is a post. Live by the post. All right? Oh, Matt did that post. Guys, I don't know, like, I have Twitter accounts for my football teams that I've been with, and I just post the winners of competitions every day, which is cool. But people that give away all the secrets by posting everything they're doing, well, I got news for you. The other team's looking at that, and they're like, oh, it's easy, I'll just work harder. All right, you gotta start lying more to people. Like, if, if I'm in the same position group as someone as a running back, I'm not on that team to sit the bench. So if he's asking me how many half gashes I ran after practice, I'm gonna say three when I really ran 12. If he's asking how much film I watched when I, uh, after everyone left, I'm saying I a half hour and I watched two. Like, everything is a post these days. Start lying more because your private life doesn't have to be your public life. And that's the truth. It's, it's, not, it's not a secret. It just bring it up to your kids. Like, nothing you do has to be all the time public information. Sore, tired, and sprint. This happened to me last year. All right, I, I did a lift with the guys at Buffalo, and, and I couldn't walk the next morning. I, I couldn't, like, getting out of bed, I had to get, like, momentum for three minutes to try to get out and move my legs, okay? So I got to work that Saturday, and, got, you know, guys are doing extra, and I get on the foam roller. Getting on the foam roller was the worst pain I've ever felt in probably my life. It was horrible. Everything in my legs were done. So I wanted to test myself. I go outside, I run a 53 just across the field. Jog, I'm like screaming, ah, and I run another one, and then I ran another one, and then I ran another one, and then I ran 35. Because I wanted to say, you know what, human body, like you, you try to stop us all the time. You, you try to slow us down. And I understand there's limitations, but that day to me was very special because I ran a mile in sprints. I ran a mile after I couldn't get out of bed the next morning. I don't know what that is, but when you're sore, when you're tired, the mindset has to be sprint. You, you, have, to, you have to keep going because no one else will. No, no, everyone's scared to do it. That's the hardest thing to do, man. You can't even walk. And you take your time on a foam roller, and you go out there and you jog one, and you jog two, and then you start moving, and then you start moving. And you... Guys, it changes you, I'm telling you. Underdog is not the problem. If you're an underdog going into a game, that's not the problem. I ain't worried about the team's mindset at that point. That's easy. That's easy to motivate. Guys, let's go. They got us picked this 20% chance to win. Easy. That is so easy. When you're the favorite, that's hard. That's a challenge as a coach because you're supposed to win. You got an 84% chance to win on ESPN Predictor. Guys, that's where you drop. And I've seen it over and over again because kids don't take it as serious. You guys cannot let the ball drop as a coach ever. Your culture should never change a thing. When you're a coach, when you're a favorite, you got to get more motivated than ever. Oh my God, we're supposed to win this week. You got to have the highest level of urgency you've ever had. Because guarantee you the kids see that too, and it's not going to be the same intent as you don't think we're going to win. <laughs> These are uh, private workouts that we do in private as teams, and I'm sure all of you do some cool stuff. These are things that I did at Buffalo and everywhere else I've been. Every Friday is kind of like a theme, or, or every other Friday, or whatever. They're very difficult, all right? So 14, I, but. 
I collect them and I move them over time. So when camp hits before we play the first game, they look back and don't even remember half of it. Every message I've ever gave the kids, I put on a front and back double-sided sheet of paper and hand it out before camp for them to always have. They don't think I was keeping track. Well, now they always got that. And guess what I see years later, them posting those quotes or whatever. So all this stuff, it builds up who you are. It gives you a sense of confidence. And just remember that because you're, you're pre-programmed and the way it looks on paper is great, but if you're not challenging your kids, you're not gonna have something special. Wanna be uncommon, okay. Let's talk about being uncommon. How about you start shutting down negative conversations about other people, and how about you start complimenting people behind their back? That's uncommon, guarantee you that. I can't tell you how much negativity there is all over the place, it's everywhere, and negativity always finds negativity. You always gravitate towards that. So if you wanna be uncommon in this day and age, you better start complimenting people behind their back. Because the greatest fear I have is my kid to get caught up in negativity. The greatest fear I have is my daughter to get caught up in negativity. And it goes for you as an adult. Don't think you're out of this right now. I've been in situations where I've caught myself, all I'm doing is bitching right now. I'm just bitching. It does nothing, it does nothing. Start shutting it down and start complimenting people behind their back. Destination addiction. Until you give up the idea that, that happiness is the next place or the next job or the next whatever, it is never, happiness is never gonna be where you're at right now. Ever. So if you're not happy with where you're at right now, you don't appreciate how far you've come, you're never gonna be happy at the next stop, you're never gonna be happy with the next female or, or male that you're with, it's always the next thing, it's more money, it's the next job, it's the next partner, whatever. You never are happy. Because you never sit back and just, man, I remember Ronald Keefer 10 years ago, and here I am. Man, I worked for Wellman five years ago, and here I am. That Bayless freaking baptized me in this whole profession, here I am. Like, just sit back, man, and appreciate what you've done. And don't be cocky about it, you just gotta be happy. Be happy with what you've done so far. This is what I've learned with haters and critics and all this stuff that people just, like I said, you're gonna make waves. Here, here's where they come, guys. I've had a lot of videos go viral, okay? There, there's, there's people, I, like, like it was an offensive line finisher at Louisiana Lafayette and I'm walking across the kids' laps with a plate on their lap singing the fight song, okay? And that, to me, that was like, okay, that's a Friday. To the world, when Tony Kornheiser started talking about a PTI, I'm like, he, he's like, oh yeah, he looks like Bambi. I don't see you saying bull training like that. Oh, he's just, just idiots. Like, and it's like all this negativity. It's like, what the hell did I do? So I learned real quick, just laugh, man. Just laugh at people because until they start hating on you, I mean, that's, that's when you know you're not really doing much. All right, because if you start disrupting things, I'm telling you, that's when you're starting to make a movement. What gives you the right to coach? This is something I take very personal. It's, uh, when I had my son, I looked at things different. I saw like this little angel that was mine and how responsible I was for him. That's someone that you're coaching right now to someone else, all right? That son or daughter that you have under your roof every day is someone's little angel that they saw just like I saw, all right? So if you're not looking at those kids the same way as your son or your daughter, and I know it's hard sometimes, but guys, you're gonna, you're gonna fail at some point because it has to mean that much to you. You gotta try to change these kids and learn them and do everything you can for them to make a difference because that's what you would do for your son. That's what you, you wouldn't overlook stuff. If he's being average, you're not gonna walk by that. So you gotta be on point with that and don't miss out because that's what gives you the right to coach. Now also, this is another huge thing. I don't feel like I'm worthy if I don't feel the pain the players are going through. And that's just personal to me. We did the hardest workout ever, yesterday, ever. I did it Thursday morning all myself. Like, that, that's just how I think that I can make a difference with those kids. And everyone's different. Everyone has a different way to coach. But if I don't feel when they're about to hit a wall, if I don't feel like uh, they're being soft as hell right now, and I gotta get them through that, I have no insight if I don't go through it. 
So that's, uh, that's why I feel like I'm worthy to be their coach. Um, what would you tell your son? A kid came into my office at Buffalo last year, grad transfer from Wisconsin. He said, coach, man, I, man, I don't know what to do. I'm stressed out, man. Like, I, this is too much. I got too many classes. I'm trying, like, I'm trying to go to the NFL, but like all this, uh, coach, man, I don't know what to do, man. I feel like giving up. I just said, look, man, what would you tell your son? Like, that's all I got to say to you. If your son is okay with you giving up or whatever, then give up, man. It's fine. Go ahead. But if you want to be valuable to him one day when he's going through the same thing you just went through, keep going. <laughs> keep fighting, man. And he didn't need to hear anything else. <clears throat> the All-American Road, guys, I I'll tell you what, man. I listen. <laughs> You know, a month ago, they named me football strength coach of the year, okay? Am I that? No, but they named me it, okay? There's a lot of people out there that are amazing. This is what I'm talking about, though. The road it takes to get to a place of recognition, if you knew, if you knew, like, man, I wish I could get there. Well, okay, then wish my journey. Wish Wish looking into your wife's eyes all the time, not knowing how you're getting the next job. Just wish it, man. Wish that part. Don't wish the top. Like, all this stuff comes with that. We all want the highest point now. We want it without work. We want it without everything. These players want to be an All-American. Anthony Johnson was an All-American wide receiver for us. He goes, uh, Coach, my road hasn't been easy. And he told me about it. Anthony Johnson's an All-American, playing the Senior Bowl, going to get drafted. High, high level athlete at Buffalo, okay? And the road he took was couldn't get good grades, got in a car accident young, uh, hurt him on the, the, the recruiting, got Duco, got a chance at Buffalo, got hurt, had to sit out red shirt a year, and then he became an All American. So if you want to be an All American, wish the journey, don't wish the top. Hurtful to be helpful. Sometimes I think about my mom and I think about how much crap I did and how much pain I put her through, through dumb things I used to do when I was a teenager. Just stupid. She was the best mom ever. Like, come on. She tried to do everything for me. And I never appreciated it. But she was always in this mindset. If I gotta, if I gotta say hurtful things to be helpful to you, that's what I'm gonna do. I will do anything I can to help you. So if I gotta be hurtful to you, I'm gonna be, that, that's how I gotta be helpful. And that's the same way with some of your players. You're gonna have to get on them at some point, and it ain't always gonna be rosy. They're gonna disagree with you. Not every player on your team is gonna buy into exactly what you want. So you're gonna have to have hurtful conversations sometimes to be helpful in the long run. Do not fear the Bible. I'm gonna go over this real quick. I don't have to spend much time on this, but just think, man. It says do not fear the Bible 365 times. That is not a coincidence. That's just not. It's, it's unbelievable. How that happens. Because fear is the number one thing that keeps us from doing all that we want. Do not fear, man. He's got your back. Perhaps during the struggle, we kind of hit that. Don't, don't come up, like, don't, uh, like, so many people, they, 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 they reach out or they whatever, when, or they need a job, or like I said, that three quarters of thanks, that always being in someone's corner, always having their back when their times are down. If you have someone's back when they are down, you are a real person to that person, I guarantee it. When a player is struggling through a hard time and everyone walks by them and you don't, you are a very important person to that player. That's how it works, guys. Fakeness, it, it's everywhere, okay? It, it's all over the place. And, and, and I'll give a GA example. At one school, I had a couple GAs that I inherited. They talk shit behind my back, okay? They, they, they were all on their own. They didn't like the way I did things. And I knew about it. They didn't know I knew. And guess who keeps calling me when they need something? Those GAs. You think I'm going to recommend them? You think I'm going to ever help them? No. Not even going to respond. <clears throat> this is the problem with this world right now, OK? If I'm standing on this side of a, a number six, I see a number six. This dude standing on this side of it, I see a number nine. You ain't telling me I'm wrong. You're not wrong. But that's the problem with this world. We listen to reply and not to understand someone else's point of view. All right, so if I, if I don't, 
as a coach, this is the number one flaw in coaches, I guarantee it. If you don't try to do this, get on their side, you guys, you're not going to see it. You're going to see your way. So many times we try to bark, bark, bark. It's my way. Let's go. Guys, just try, man. I'm telling you, not, you don't have to ruin your culture. Just try to see what they're talking about. Try to see how they were raised. Try to see what they're coming from. And then you might make a difference. Logic first heart. All right, I'll go over this real quick. The other uh, last year had a choice between two jobs. One of them paid more. One of them gave you a car. One of them didn't. One of them was worse weather. One of them was a new staff. One of them was an old staff. I gave my word first to that lesser paying job with no car and all that stuff, less money. That one looked more flashy to me. Bells were ringing. They were trying to come at me hard. This one did not look very flashy to me. But I gave my word. And my word meant more than any money. My word meant more than a car. My word meant more in the long run. And when I listened to my heart instead of my brain telling me to do that part, my heart took me this way and it paid off in ways I couldn't imagine. A coach's toughest day is when he sees the player that he has and he has all this talent. He has the most ridiculous talent in the world. But he's not stronger than his distractions. He just can't make the right choices, man. He just can't, he falls apart when temptation comes his way. <clears throat> that is the, the hardest thing to do as a coach and a dad. All right? So just keep that in your head, man, because it's your job to make sure that they have all of these principles that will never let them fall into temptation. You try to drill deposits into them every day of just value. And until they get to a point where they don't have to give in to temptation anymore, man, you did a great job with that kid. These are lists that I have from being, uh, th these are things I make up now. These are things that take no talent in every different category of my life. And I just write down. And this is stuff that I have to, I have it posted on my office walls. And as a dad, I have to show enthusiasm every day. I have to go out of my way to do simple things to make their day. I have to teach them valuable lessons. I have to lead by example and protect them. If I'm not doing those five things, that take no talent. Like, I'm missing the boat, and I struggle with that. Because sometimes I walk home, and I'm tired, man. I'm blown out. I got nothing. Nothing left. I want to just check out. And that's when I really have to be the most detailed I've ever been. That's the most important part of the day, even if it's for an hour. Being a husband, it's, it's the same thing, man. All, if all of, it's, all of it's just intentional. Bring your flowers on a Tuesday. Why? Because it's not Valentine's Day. Everyone does that. Do something out of the ordinary to make her feel special. And I have, how can I help is a word I always try to say in my mind so I don't just sit down on the couch or I don't just like check out. I gotta constantly ask myself as a husband, how can I help her? How, you know, that, that, if I don't do that, man, I ain't gonna do it. Because I gotta be intentional about it. No talent list is being a son. Okay, they've done a lot for me, obviously. Tell them I love them every day or every other day. Try to tell them I love them. Be very thankful. Share as much of my life as I can with them. Tell them, tell them what's going on at work. Tell them, tell them everything that's going on with your family. FaceTime as much as you can. Time's ticking, man. Make them proud by your work ethic. I hope my parents, if anything else, they're proud of uh, all the distractions I used to give into are the exact things I don't do now and put it into a positive way. I hope they see that in me. Help them if they're ever in need. Being a coach, learn everything you can about the players. Motivate them every day. Bring positive energy to their life. Challenge them in every way because you're doing them the greatest gift. You're giving them the gift, the key to life, if you challenge them. Earn respect by example. And then my no talent code. This is the overall picture for me, all right? This is, I gotta get to work early. I gotta read and write before my day starts. I gotta work harder than the players I coach. I gotta ask questions constantly. I gotta go out of my way to help others. And I gotta be praying and pray and be thankful. This is a formula I came up with and I'm almost not, I'm hitting with, I'm, I'm left hooking you, I'm up with perspective right now, okay? I'm sorry about that. I just wanna try to give you everything I can real quick. It's almost done. Live what you preach, man. Be a light in dark times for kids. Give extreme effort to make a small difference. Share your mistakes. Get excited to help others succeed. And then I think you will be a great leader. But until that, it's fake. Live what you preach, man. 
If you're trying to preach something, be that, be that answer. Be that message. And what's the point of this whole talk? you got to be aware that almost everything you do takes no talent. Almost everything. And if you're not intentional about trying to improve little things in your life that take zero talent, zero, the difference you can make is very minimal. And you don't need it. You don't need talent to separate yourself. Just be determined to be irreplaceable. These are guys that I want to thank. And then I got like the first day's video just to show you how I attacked the team. Um, Matt Bayless to me is my big brother, my father figure in this, everything you can imagine. You, I can't sit up here and give a justice to what me and Matt Bayless have been through together. But he's one of my best friends. If I'm ever in trouble, I call him. All that stuff, man, and that's what it's really about. I love Matt Bayless, and I told you what the world loved me. Ron McKeefrey, or Aaron Wellman, I'm sorry, first. This guy is a machine, and you're gonna hear him talk later. A machine, someone I respect at the highest level, beyond. He, he taught me so much, he doesn't even know. He doesn't even know how much he taught me. He is one of the hardest workers I've ever met. He is one of the greatest people I've ever known. He is phenomenal, and I'm so thankful for him. Ron McKeefrey is just, as you know, the godfather of this thing. He, he's, he's helped so many people in this profession get to where they are. It's incredible. He turned down a job at North Texas and gave it to me. That's how I got my first job. That's how I got my in as a head strength coach. So it's like eternal greatness, man. It's eternal gratefulness for me. My high school coach, I still talk to this day, and if you're a high school coach, understand this. You have these kids at an impressionable age where they're going to either succeed or not. And you guys make the truest difference there is. And credit to you for being here, man, because that's huge. My parents, of course, my wife, of course, who, <laughs> my wife, all right, this time last year, I can't even explain the place we were in. We've been through a lot, and I can't thank her enough. All the former current interns, right? GAs, assistants, all these people that have helped me. And adversity and all my mistakes, I thank them. And I'm very thankful for that. This is day one where I just met the team. You had to start the, the ball rolling. You don't get, if you swing on the first day and miss, you miss big. Lazy people do a little work and think they should be winning. But winners work as hard as possible and still worry if they're being lazy. So if you're a winner, you ain't comfortable. Contact information. If you have any questions about this talk, I know I went a little over. I'm sorry about that. That's my at. That's my email address. Uh, that's my cell phone number. That's my Twitter accounts that I have. And um, I hope you got something out of it. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate it.